Was geht? Um, today, I am gonna do a run and a lift and show you how I approach it. It's probably not the same for everybody, but maybe someone can learn something today. I'm really starting to enjoy making these videos. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. All right, so today I ran a few laps before and then started doing some basic movements just to basically loosen up my joints from the neck down. This is something that I got uh, from Zimmerman and as I'm older, I've learned to really appreciate some of this stuff because it is sometimes a little bit harder to, to warm up, you know, getting, getting, everything, getting everything flowing. But normally when I start with these running lifting days um the the whole idea of it is i'll do one third of what i would do running and probably one third of what i would do lifting and when lifting i would be keeping the weights um pretty low because you you uh don't have the same power output after after a little bit of running and agilities and so i would do this stuff for a warm-up a dynamic warm-up uh, that I've been doing for a long time. It's just kind of a quick hitter. I'm not doing the normal longer routine warm-up. Everything's cut down a little bit because I know that I'm going into the gym when I'm finished with all this stuff. And same thing with the hurdles. I just picked uh, a couple things that, that I like to do um, just to really get a quick warm-up, not take too much energy out, loosen up at the same time. I know I'm doing legs and squatting today, so I want to get uh, I want to get um, loosened up for that later on, which is why I'm going under the hurdles too and not just over because I'm not doing really like a sprinting workout, but it's a, a quick run uh, and a quick lift. And, uh, and then after the hurdles, I got out on the speed ladder and normally I would do maybe eight exercises or, or nine of them. And I just decided to pick five today. Uh, just because I said I cut everything down, I try to make it a, a one third. And something that's really important when you're going through the ladder is you don't just come and walk out. You have to get a burst. You got to lean your shoulders forward and you got to sprint for at least five yards or three hard steps. And everything, it drives me crazy when I see guys move really fast in the ladder and then they just walk out of it. Like I, I don't understand the the purpose of that. I think that you know when you're in a situation in football, when you're in uh, in a in a in a tight area, you got to move your feet really quick, and then you got to burst out and get to the open field. So that's that's pretty much what what I practice every time I go through the ladders. I never just go through and just and just turn around and go back. It just uh, doesn't make any sense. But everything I do twice, because uh, some of these things are one way, and then you do it the other way. Uh, like this one, for instance, uh, these are called Ali's, like Muhammad Ali. And so obviously when you do one of those one way, you got to do it the other way. And again, a huge emphasis on bursting out from the ladder and sprinting three steps or five yards, whatever you decide to do. And then I just did uh, four falling start 40s. I did two with my right foot and then two with my left foot. And I'm just falling forward. And when I get that sensation that I'm going to fall on my face, I, I burst out um, into, into a sprint. And these aren't 100%. It's probably like 90% speed cause, uh, because I'm not, I'm not focusing only on running today. And then I picked two agility drills that I, that I like. And I just went through each of them one time as fast as I could. And every time I did the ladder or my agility drills today, I carried a football because I do carry the ball when I play and I don't always do it when I go through drills, but sometimes I like to just to switch things up. Um, so that was the basic four cone drill. And then this one is a diagonal sprint, a back pedal, a diagonal sprint, and then a shuffle. So it kind of gets a lot of movements all in one. Uh, and after, um, after this little running thing, I was, uh, I was feeling really warmed up, but I wasn't too tired to go into the gym. And because I knew I was doing submaximal weights today and I wasn't really pushing it, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do the workout that I had planned in my head. I'm going to do it backwards. I, I'm not on a, on a strict program right now. I, I have a, probably another week or two before we get into that for the, for the off season. 
uh, so I can do whatever I want. So I decided to, uh, you know what? I was like, screw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start backwards and finish with the lift that I plan to start my workout with. I just wanted to kind of mess with my body a little bit and see what it did. And, um, and those reverse hyper extensions that I was doing, I was, I'm really trying to pump some blood into my back. I'm trying to get my posterior chain firing. Uh, and as I said, I want, I wanted to get a blood flow in there. So when I did go to the squat, I wanted to be really, really warmed up. And, uh, and I was, and, and so I did, I, I supersetted those with those banded abductors that you just saw. Uh, I did, I did, I think three sets, three sets of 12 each. And then, um, and then moved on to, to the weight stuff, uh, a unilateral movement that I really like, a uh, single leg Romanian deadlift. Uh, the, the weight also doesn't have to be heavy on this lift. This is a lift that's a big bang for your buck. You know, it, it teaches your, your body to, to, to be solid and, and balanced uh, when you're dropping your shoulders and getting low, which for me mimics uh, going into contact which is in football, if you're not getting low in a stable position, when you get into contact, you're never gonna win those battles and you're probably gonna end up getting hurt. Um, but it's a, it's a lift, I tried to slow everything down a little bit today and just really focus on technique uh, and, and balance throughout, throughout, throughout what I was doing. And, uh, and then after I did that, I got into the squat, which was supposed to be my second lift of the day, but it ended up, being my second to last because I worked backwards. And we went with Zimmerman uh, last time and we're critiquing him so we can, we can critique me a little bit. Uh, I'm, whenever I get into my setup, if you look at my feet, once I set my feet, I don't move them anymore. I don't move them around after every set. I try not to rock forward and rock back. I really pretend like my feet are glued to the floor and once they're set, they don't move throughout the entire set. Um, and at the same thing I talked about last video with my eyes is I'm picking a point on the wall and I'm fixating my eyes on that because I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep everything still. I don't want to be looking up, looking down, moving my feet around, adjusting the bar on my back. That's nothing that, that is going to help you in the squat. It's just going to make it more difficult. And the biggest focus I was trying to do was trying to see if I could keep the bar over the middle of my foot. So when you film yourself to try to coach yourself in lifting, especially on the squat, you want to go from the side so you can see the end of the barbell and the middle of your foot. And you want to see if it's, if it's over the middle of your foot when you're at the bottom of your lift. And a lot of these reps today felt really good. And then you'll see sometimes I, I lose balance, I sway a little bit or at the bottom, which I think happens a lot, um, is the bar tends to travel forward towards your toes because it's such a low position. And I think that you overcompensate the thought of dropping your ass and staying with the weight on your, on, uh, closer to your heels. You think that you, if you lean forward, that's getting lower, you know, and, or, or getting lower. When you go to get low, you accidentally lean forward thinking that that's getting deeper, but you're just moving the bar forward over the, past the middle of your foot, which ultimately um, hurts your balance. And at the top, you see, I'm taking a deep breath every time I go down. I'm pretending like I'm sipping a hot bowl of soup. And that's setting my core before I drop down. And I hold my breath the whole time I squat. Like once I start to go down, I don't let my breath out until I get to the top. I don't breathe out on the way up. I hold my breath the whole time and I try to keep that pressure inside of my belly. And then onto a faster movement for the cleans, which I wanted to start with today, I'm actually ending with, these are called heaving hang cleans. It's a very fast movement. As soon as I drop the bar, I'm not staying in, in my front rack position uh, for very long at all. And as soon as I drop the bar, I'm dropping and getting into my starting position. And it's just, I'm getting a rhythm and I'm really throwing my shoulders back. This is a great workout for your upper back. And then once your technique is good, you can move fast like this. You know, I clean a lot, so I, I decided that I wanted to do it. And you can see the light from the, from the window is pretty cool. I didn't notice that, but I got like a little halo, man. It must be the football gods keeping an eye on me. But I did uh, three sets of six in that. And uh, I did three sets of six in the squat. Nothing crazy, nothing heavy. Just technique, technique, technique. Balance, balance, balance. I combined that with a run earlier. 
And so it was a good workout. I didn't have to kill myself in the run or in the lift, but all together, it felt really good when it was over. So I hope you guys got something out of this and thank you for tuning in again.